Welcome back friends. Now that our program displays what all is on offer in the shop along with its pricing, it's time that we allow our user to start placing some orders. Now we are going to do this in two steps. In this video, I'll show you how we can get the user to place a single order. And then in the next video, we'll see how we can use a while loop to make this process continuous until the user decides that he or she is ready to move on towards a checkout. So let's get started with a single order. We remember we are displaying, uh, you know, um, all these items here. And now we want the user to say, choose any one of these items which he wants to purchase. So I make a statement that, okay, look, you know, I'm going to say, create a variable here. and I'm going to say order equals to say input, uh, enter one to five to select a food food item and say six to proceed to checkout. Now, if I say just did this, so what's going to happen is that I'm going to get a question, I mean, sort of like a statement that I have to, uh, I'll just add an extra print over here after the for loop so that I get one extra line. It's a little bit easier for me to see. So if I run this code, what's going to happen is that I, you know, the, the, the menu items display along with the price and I get this question, enter one to five to select a food item and say six to proceed to checkout. Now here, let's say I, uh, so the intention here is that if I want to purchase milkshake, I'll press one. Uh, if I want to purchase chocolate, I'm going to say enter three and so on. Let's say I say four. Now, while what I want is that I want to uh, order eclairs and there's no problem in this, but at this point, I want to realize I want you to realize that this order is in fact a string. Now, why is it a string? Because notice that it's being shown as two, uh, you know, um, two quotation marks. In fact, you can use this, uh, you know, this command called order and it tells you this is actually a string. I mean type uh, and this is actually a string. Now, there's no problem as such with this, but later on we are going to have to use this order to index into a list. Uh, that we have created. We'll see that later. And for that purpose, I'm going to convert this into an int, right? Now, what this does is that it's going to convert, a, you know, uh, the, the order into an integer. So if I ran the same code now, and let's say I say enter four, this time round order, if I say it's an integer, notice there's no quotations here. And in fact, uh, if I can see that also by doing type and, you know, order, and it will tell me this time it's an integer. Now, the reason I've done this, as I said, is because we want to use this order to index into the uh, into the list, let's say. However, this also means that now there is a certain possibility that if I give an input which cannot be converted to an integer, right? Now, for example, here four was fine. I could convert that to integer four, but let's say I, you know, I played a little bit of a prank and I said, okay, instead of four, I go and enter say ABC. Now, or say, uh, you know, ABC. Now, clearly, ABC cannot be converted to a string and cannot be converted to a, a, to an integer. And hence, I get this, you know, uh, it basically it's just saying that you cannot convert this ABC into, a, into an integer. It means that I have given an in, invalid input. In fact, similarly, let's say I gave, say, 4.1 as a, uh, you know, um, as my choice, let's say. Again, that's a problem because it's also an invalid integer, invalid uh, you know input to be converted to an integer so while you know we will still go ahead with do the integer if you are interested there's a way to handle this kind of an error uh, but that's for a later topic however uh, we will convert our order to integer because like i said this will help us index into a list and we will give ourselves code to protect ourselves from let's say you know, a situation where a user does enter an integer, but that is not inside this range. So maybe this is seven or eight or something like that. That situation we can handle quite easily and we'll do that. Uh, now that we know how the user can place one order. Now, if it was just one order, then we could have just proceeded, found its price and so on and so forth. However, uh, we will do a little bit more here. We will get our user to, uh, let's say, you know, keep purchasing till the time he or she chooses otherwise. And for that purpose, we are going to use a while loop. Uh, I'll come back to that in the next video. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.